I'm Ian Stark from New Blue, and in this video, we're going to take a very high level look at the Captivate user interface. I've already created a simple project, and at the moment, we're looking at a list of all items that go to make up my program, along with a preview of the currently selected item. I can open and close other panels by clicking on these buttons. Notice that the project panel is open by default because this is where you'll spend a lot of your time. But of course you can hide it when you don't need it. The project panel contains all the elements that make up your program. You can add and organize new items here such as video and audio sources, graphic overlays and transitions and if you want connect them with data sources. Let's open the library and add something new to our project. The library is where you'll find hundreds of preset graphics that you can drag into your project and use as is, or customize to taste. By mousing over an item, you'll see a quick animated preview like this transition or this lower third. Let's drag this lower third into our project and close the library. Obviously I don't want the default data to be used, so I'm going to customize it by opening up the properties panel. Notice that this panel has several tabs. The live values show what will be displayed when I play this graphic out, so let's change those. The changes are immediately reflected in the preview window. And while we're here, let's also change the colours to reflect my brand. That's easily done using the eyedropper, or I can type in a value directly. Rather than creating and customising a separate lower third for every person in my programme, I can add multiple versions using the values grid and then bring these up live as I need them. An extremely powerful feature of Captivate is that you can also do this using external data such as spreadsheets. We'll have a whole tutorial covering that in the near future. The program monitor shows exactly what my audience will see. So if I play this lower third, it beautifully animates onto the screen and off when I've finished with it. And when I change cameras to show a different presenter, by using the values grid, I can quickly bring up the new name. Captivate is so much more than just bringing gorgeous animated graphics on and off. It's also a full video production gallery. The video switcher lets you switch between different video sources, such as cameras, webcams, NDI sources and so on. You can also set up transitions between sources, from a huge selection ranging from subtle dissolves to ridiculous 3D bouncing things. If you prefer a straight cut, mercifully that's available as well. The audio mixer panel is where you'll create a broadcast mix from your various audio sources, aided by these handy dB level meters. And you can mute individual sources here, which is particularly useful for political debates. The shot launcher is where you'll find any shots that you've created. Now a shot is a selection of elements that are grouped together and launch simultaneously. And the shot launcher is a handy panel for organizing and playing them out. Notice that what I'm seeing in the preview window is the item that's currently selected in the project panel. What we see in the program monitor, of course, is what's actually being played out live. Over in the top right corner is the Start Streaming button. Click this to configure your live streaming settings and then to start broadcasting to your chosen service, all seamlessly integrated for your streaming convenience. If your preference is to record your program rather than stream it, Captivate has you covered. You can record the output from your program monitor, already mixed as a single video, and you'll soon also be able to record the individual inputs that make up your program as separate video files or ISOs, although that feature is currently only available to beta users while we polish it up. Captivate continues to evolve in very exciting ways, and although it's not ready for prime time just yet, you might be interested to learn that we're working on a feature that lets you export a session to your chosen NLE for later editing, along with all transitions, cuts and graphics neatly set up on your timeline. Watch this space. Another fantastic example of how Captivate integrates with the outside world is found in the conferencing menu. Here you can set up and join Zoom and Teams meetings and fully integrate them as sources within your program. Again, we'll be exploring these features in much greater depth in future tutorials. Finally, let's have a quick look at the Setup and Live buttons. These give you two commonly used workspace layouts that are optimally configured for when you're setting up a project and when you're playing it out. 
You can customise these layouts to suit your workflow, and if you long press the Setup or Live button, you can save your modifications as defaults on a per-project basis. So there you have it, a whistle-stop tour of the Captivate user interface. Once you know where everything is, you'll be building projects very quickly. And in future videos, we'll dive deeper into each of the main panels and explore some of the more advanced functionality that New Blue Captivate has to offer. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. Thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,